So there's this creator, Life of Riza. You guys may have heard of her. And in this video, at least today, and by the way, welcome to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be talking about Life of Riza's color grading breakdown, if you would. We've done one of these on the channel before. So let's hop into it. I don't want to waste any time. We're going to make this really quick. Just a little bit of an idea of how and what she might be doing behind the scenes and how maybe you can replicate at least the color grading part of her workflow. Uh, again, these are just my opinions. This is just an assumption. I don't know her. I can't tell you what the hell she does, but I can tell you what I think she does. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So let's watch one of these together. And then while we're watching, let's keep in mind what she might be doing, what color grading, you know, techniques that we see, what things look like. So let's, let's click a video and watch. Starting over. Not necessarily the prettiest process, but definitely a humbling one. A fresh start, a clean slate. Sometimes we just need a new beginning. Okay, so just in the first 15 seconds, one beautiful work, it looks great. The camera movements are awesome. I wish I was talking about that in this video, but we're not, we're talking about the color grading. And in this color grading, everything feels very, very real. So I'm gonna put this on mute so I can play it back real quick. Everything feels very real. Like if you pause right here, that looks like I'm just in the house looking at it. It doesn't look stylized, it doesn't look like it needs to be some movie-esque, you know, cinematic color look to it. And that's, I think, very, very intentional. There's nothing crazy about it. There's no super dark shadows or super colored shadows one way or the other. It just feels very authentic and very natural. So what she probably more likely than not did is just converted the Direct 709 do some basic lighting correction and call it a day there. Not to say that she didn't add a color grade to it, but it's not significant enough, I think, to keep touching on. So let's, let's just jump to another part of the video. Drastically different. Let's play this real quick. Play it back and see what she's talking about, see what's going on and see why she might have chose what she's chosen. All right, so what I'm basically doing, you, like this is so unnecessary, I definitely don't have to do this, but basically I'm putting some of this matte Mod Podge so, onto prints because when it dries, it can it. give it sort of a texture. So she's using a window light right now to cast onto her. She doesn't have many other lights in the scene. I'm sure there are other lights in the scene we don't see, but generally speaking, she's letting the window light control the scene, turn off all the lights in the background, and then in the color correction, in the color grade, she's really prioritized that isolation that she has given from that window light as her primary key light. And she's only prioritized keeping everything here in detail. So that background that was already, you know, kind of unlit because of the way the scene was lit, she just enhanced that by probably lowering the blacks, lowering the shadows, maybe lowering the highlights a little bit so we get some detail back on that apron there, but probably raise the whites and either which way probably boost the color, uh, the contrast as well. So realistically, it's once again, it feels very natural. It feels very real and authentic. And I think that's her whole approach and whole style. But there's also a very warm tone happening here in the color grade of the footage, right? So there's that color correction we just talked about. But now there's a color grade that is more or less on the greenish yellow side. If we look at her sweater here, yes, it's beige, but beige is made up of yellows and warm tones. And I think that those are slightly enhanced but also given a hint of blue because I see a hint of like cyan happening over here in the darker shadows. And it's it's really not much to go on, but if you look at it, you know, and compared to like just the color beige, you might see a little bit more blues happening in that, which tells me that her background, which is the shadows, and the shadows happening here are probably overall, like all the shadows, are probably pushed slightly cooler. And then the highlights and midtones are probably pushed slightly more in the greens and yellows. And these are just guesses, once again, just my assumptions, but just based off, you know, depicting each section of this shot, that's my guess. Given what we do know about what she might do, why don't we take this into our own footage in Rear Pro and test it out? Now, she does shoot on a Sony, so granted, my footage is not gonna look the same because it's shot on Canon, but overall, I think that we can get at least somewhat of a similar look using what we just talked about. So in Premiere Pro, I have brought that video I just recorded off the screen into here just so we can have a reference to look at. And we have this shot. Now, the reason I chose this shot is because this shot and this shot both have very keen spotlights, if you would. Very, very obvious where the lighting's coming from and where it's not. And then the lighting coming through this window isolates it very well so where we can make the rest of the shadows very dark and contrasty like we see here and like we see there. So I'm gonna go with this. Let's grab a few frames, put it on top of her shot there. So now we can go into comparison mode, click comparison. Again, we wanna convert this. I'm gonna copy this with my tree. So we'll put these side by side. Now, first thing I notice is that, you know, 
My highlights, not as bright as they should be. I still have some detail, but I want my highlights up. I also want my whites up a little bit. Contrast, I want to boost up a lot. White balance, I want to set to the color of the wall, which is white. There we are. And now if we compare these closer, what do we see wrong? Well, the lighting looks proper and that's, you know, you're not really copying the lighting, we're copying the color. So on our adjustment layer is where the fun begins. Obviously in this shot, particularly the highlights, midtones, and shadows are all pushed towards green and yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and just start there. Let's make these, uh, once again, let's do this. Let's even bring this up. Color wheels and match, take our midtones, Push it towards the greens and yellows. That's a bit too green. There we go. Let's raise those midtones up a bit and back that off a tiny bit because it's really easy to overdo it. We don't want to overdo it, but we do want to have some strength there. Uh, again, shadows, I'd say are pushed towards the yellows. Highlights, the same. I would also say that maybe our midtones should come back closer to the baseline. And if we look at before versus after, I'd say that those two shots are very, very close to being similar. Not that it's the same, but it's similar. Again, we're shooting Canon versus Sony. It's continuously gonna be a battle for us. But I'm done with the colors and match. I'm gonna go to creative, or I'm actually gonna go to curves, drop down on my blacks again. I want those darks really crushed, and I want those whites to kind of pop more. And then I wanna crush top part of the whites by dragging that corner down as well. So before, after, I think after is looking way better. Let's boost that faded film up a little bit because she does have some softness in her overall aesthetic. And I like that. And now on sharpen, let's go and bring it down to like negative 0.4. And then vibrance, I'd say bring up a little bit. And remember, this is our original shot. That's it. So I'll turn the effects off or I'll turn off this adjustment layer. That's where we started. Color corrected, color graded. Overall, I'm quite pleased with that shot. Now, sure, exposure's a little off in that shot. You can see some breaking in the colors. But who, who cares, man? I think it looks okay. I'm content with that. I would say that this is a good place to stop. And overall, the, the takeaways you should get from copying Life of Reese's visual style in terms of her color grade would just be shadows, highlights, and midtones are pushed more towards the yellows and greens. She's got a lot of crushed blacks in her look and a very overall, at the end of the day, authentic and realistic color look to her footage. Thank you guys for watching. Again, these are just my opinions. I am not a colorist, I'm far from it. If you are a chorus and you can tell that I'm far from it, give me some criticism, please, but some constructive criticism. That being said, thank you guys for watching. Let me know who you want to see next, uh, and we will try to, you know, make more of these if you guys like them. Either which way, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is not as long as it looks like it's going to be. Goodbye.